Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. So this is going to be the final segment on this 2A3 output transformer shootout. And just for fun, I want to try these big ISO Tango 30 watt, I call it FC33.5, I think it's an S2. It's their 300B specific output transformer, or one of them. And as you saw in an earlier video, I believe it's because of the operating point that I'm running these modern 2A3 tubes. The originals were 15 waters. I'm running these tubes at like 21 watts because these modern tubes can handle more dissipation. And instead of a three and a half watt, we're getting four and a half to five watts out of the amplifier, which I believe makes it a lot more usable for speakers that maybe aren't super efficient. And so we tried 2.5K versus 3.5K. 3.5K performs so much better that that's what I'm going to be using. And when I initially built the amp, I used these 3.2K hay booers and got fantastic performance too. And so I want to see what these big tangos work like. They work really well. I think I'm going to build me a 2A3 amp using a pair of these using some you know silver wire nice parts inside it and i've got some solid plate eml 2a3 tubes i've got some they're called 300b mesh 2.5s and they're mesh plate 300b tubes that have 2.5 volt heaters but because they have a larger plate like a 300b tube has you can run the same dissipation that you can with a solid plate 2A32, which hopefully that's not too confusing. Also bought a EML 5U4 mesh plate rectifier tube for this amp. I've got some really kind of top shelf, those red plate RCA or the red base RCA mil spec 6SL7 tubes that are really good sounding. And so I want to just kind of do an all-in 2A3 build. And I want to see how these big tangos work with a 2A3. Make sure we're not losing some high-frequency response or something. You know, we're not giving something up. Because I know, like the big Ed cores, and I've heard the big Hammonds kind of stifle the high frequencies or they lose the top-end sparkle. And... I know my 300B has nice top end response, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. So the other contender we're going to do are these Thermionic Labs. They're a 30 watt 4K that we potted in these cans in a previous video. We got these cans off eBay, and I think they're kind of, you know, Tango cloned cans. And I have a feeling there might be a little too high in impedance for this application. I know that I saw the difference between a 3.2 and a 3.5K, and I have a feeling that when we go to 4K, we're going to lose probably a half a watt or more of power, and I don't think we want to give that up, but we're going to test that and see. And my plan is to use these on a higher volt 300B amp that can take advantage of these 4K windings. And we'll be building that in a future video. It might be a fixed bias one, but we'll see. So anyway, let's get to testing these output transformers. So now we've got the big ISO 30 watt FC30-3.5 S, which I use on my deluxe 300B amps. And I want to see how they perform hooked up to this tube. And they do really well, which does not shock me. If we look at the power here, you know, they all seem to kind of hit this 4 watt at 1% distortion. But then it carries it out to 4.5 watts and or 4.6 watts and we're at 1.2%. And we're still just over 1.5% distortion at 5 watts. So you can get 
an extra watt of power or usable power out of this amp by going with these larger transformers. So the next thing you want to look at is the frequency response. And this is super impressive. You can see right along in here, we're basically at zero dB across this whole range here. And then guess what? Even down at 20 hertz, we're just a little over a quarter of a dB down from what we are at 1K. Because you can see it's like negative 0 0.14 dBs. And then when you're down at 20 hertz, it's 0 0.36. So we're less than a quarter of a dB down at 20 hertz. So that's how you get your bass response. Bigger iron. And this proves it. And on the top end, we still got the same less than a half a dB down actually on the top end. So sometimes when you go with bigger iron, you lose the high frequency response. And that's one of the things about these Tango transformers. They don't do that. They get you the bass response and they keep the high end response. If we look at the scope, we got almost a vertical front leading edge of the square wave, a little overshoot bump. And if we come up to 10K, it's still really nice. It's got actually a little more bumpiness here than the 12S did, but that's still a nice looking square wave being run at full power. And then we come to the THD versus frequency, and just like we would expect, down at 20 hertz, we've only got 4% distortion. And it quickly rolls down to where at 100 hertz, it's basically just flat all the way across. So what you get with this bigger iron is you get cleaner bass response, which shouldn't be a shock. And then, I haven't looked at this yet. There's the second order, and there's the third order. And so that's the other advantage you get with this bigger transformer is we have more second order than third order harmonic distortion which should sound better so yeah these guys aren't cheap i don't have the price right here in front of me we'll cover that at the little exit part of the video but not shocked these things are rock star performers but hey you gotta just pony up for them if you want this kind of performance and have a chassis that's big enough to mount these on so last thing i want to do is i want to try those thermionic labs i want to hook those things up and see what they perform like so let me go do that okay and the final contestant we have is a pair of these big thermionic labs transformers that you may have seen the video where i potted these things and these are 4k so they're a little higher impedance than the other ones in this test and you're seeing that this little curve here where the thd turns up starts sooner because the impedance is higher but you can see also how much lower the THD is in this range so just something to note that this probably isn't the ideal impedance for this tube and it shows how much difference even 500 ohms can make so yeah we're still you know, at four and a half watts, we're at just under 2% distortion, but it's probably starting to clip around in here, and we're getting this lower drive level because of the higher primary impedance. But if we look at the frequency response, it's insane. Like, this is all pretty much just flat, and down here, 20 hertz is just, I mean, it's maybe 0.1 db down across this whole range or 0.1 db variation across this whole range which is just freaking insane and then at 20k we're down the same about point you know 0.5 dbs or so and so very very good performance on the frequency response i can't wait to hook this transformers up to a 300 b tube and see what they'll do we look at the scope there's 1k it's got a little ring on the front, but, you know, it's pretty well managed. At 10K, 
it's got a little more wonky donkey going on than we had with the tango it's got a little dip right here but it's still nothing like we saw with that ed core very well controlled and then when we do the thd versus frequency again down here at 20 hertz we got four percent distortion which is right there with what we saw with the tango and then it's lower across this whole band here and then let's look at the second order and then the third order drops down there just like we saw with the tango so while these aren't ideally suited for a 2A3 tube I think they might be Rockstar transformers hooked up to a 300B tube where we can push more current through them so anyway just wanted to kind of see what these guys were all about again these aren't ideal for a 2A3 but yeah anyway I think this is a great place to wrap up this video. Well, these two transformers performed pretty much how expected. And like you saw, this 4K just really isn't the right impedance to be using with a 2A3 tube. It just compromises too much power, in my opinion, for the distortion savings. And we kind of went past that kind of sweet spot that the 3.5K was. But I do think I'm going to use a pair of these big tangos on my personal 2A3 build. Yeah, it's going to cost, you know, several hundred dollars more to use these versus using the Haybuers or some other, you know, lower spec transformer that are close. But like most things in life, sometimes to get that last little bit costs some money. And... Given that I'm spending some pretty good money on some really nice tubes to use in it, I want to make sure that the output transformers and you know not you know the other one I built I didn't use silver wire inside it and that kind of sort of thing. So I want to really do an upscale version of that 2A3 for myself. Might even look at getting some nicer speaker jacks in RCA jacks and that sort of thing for it too and just you know kind of go all in because i really like the way these 2a3 amps sound they're just being able to use ac heaters simplifies it that hammond power transformer works so good these tubes i mean even the horizon tubes sound good in this amp but some broken in eml tubes once those got some hours on them they really sound good so I'll put the link to Tubes USA below. Talk to George about getting you some tubes. And he also sells the Tango Transformers, whether you want to use the FC12s, FC20s, or these FC30s. All three of them work really well. And they're kind of obvious. There's like, you know, one's 300, 400, 500 kind of price range each. And so. You know, you decide how much money you want to spend. If you want to go all in, get some of these FC30s. I think the results showed for themselves, especially on the frequency response. It's just super flat, beautiful square wave. Just everything you could ask from an output transformer, these things deliver. And again, these thermionic labs, I think in the right circuit, you know, used with a higher voltage 300b tube that's gonna you know be ideal for the 4k and the 3.5k would probably be more distortion that that's probably what's gonna make these shine is putting them in the right circuit so anyway this has been really fun the main thing i learned is don't use these little 7 watt hashimoto transformers they're just to me, they're expensive, and they were the worst by far of all of these. I mean, go get some little $100 Ed cores. We'll kick these things butt, and so don't waste your money on those. They look pretty, but they got a nice name, but they do not have the performance. The little tangos were fine. These were not. So anyway, I appreciate all y'all watching. 
If you enjoyed this series, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters, people that have joined the membership thing on the channel. Get a little stipend from that. That's cool. Got people that get throw a donation my way. If you found this helpful and you know maybe saved you some money from wasting it on something like this, you can throw a donation to me at my website. Hey, but just watching the video is what keeps this channel rolling. So thanks to all you folks that regularly watch the channel, that have subbed and all that stuff. And until the next video, have a nice day.